us just to analyze the politics of the day, IEBC preparedness, which really has been a very big conversation here in the country, together really with what's, what's to expect uh, today from the Court of Appeal. Uh, let me introduce the gentleman in studio. We don't have the, uh, the, the what is it, the two-thirds gender rule today, but it's fine. I'll start from my immediate right. We have Charles Kipley. Thank you very much for joining us. He yeah, is a funny. political analyst. We also have Duncan Okach, who's a lawyer and also a political analyst. We also have Professor Kyoko Ireri from the USIU. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. All right, so gentlemen, we're waiting for that, the biggest, really, um, decision, especially for IEBC. Currently, as we speak, we have about four cases in court against the IEBC, but this one really is the most serious of them all with just 18 days to the elections um, which way I know it's not right to you know to sort of like uh, talk about our court process but uh, are we likely to see the five judge bench co make a consideration with just 18 days to the elections I'll start with you Charles uh, thank you Betty thanks for having me I think uh, on this case that is before the, the courts today mm -hmm. my thinking is that uh, the judges may be influenced by the need to have uh, the context of the elections, yes. and therefore their ruling may may, 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 may may tend to have more of judicial restraint in mm -hmm. terms of uh, overturning this other ruling, because now uh, the implication of a ruling that's probably by upholding the decision of the High Court will be really throwing the preparation process for mm -hmm. the tendering of the ballot papers mm -hmm. into disarray, and uh, just basically creating a lot of uh, discomfort around the process of preparation All right. to the elections. Okay, but would it uh, through the process into this area? Because uh, IBC, on the other hand, they're doing something that many people actually, you know, lauding and giving them a clap for, because at the same time that, you know, they were waiting for this appeal and the ruling, they also made uh, contact with five other companies who would be potential suppliers of uh, this um, ballot uh, uh, papers. What do you think of that move? So, I mean, the court is the court aware that this other process was ongoing, and that you know they would give a fair judgment in regards, you know, regardless of uh, the timing. Duncan. Betty, when Justice Odunga was issuing one of these rulings, mm -hmm. he said that judges don't live in mass and go and sleep in mass and come back in the morning. Mm -hmm. They actually know what is happening, and they act that's actually an advantage. Therefore, they know what is happening, and it is actually wisdom that has influenced IBC to actually take that step. Because we were criticizing IBC yes. for actually appealing, because at the end of the day, if this appeal, because you, unless you are 100% sure, then you can say, I will not do anything. But the judgment can actually, the ruling can go either way. Mm -hmm. So that if it goes into, in terms of what my colleague is saying, that it will uphold the current judgment of the High Court, it will actually mean that they will not have wasted time. Mm -hmm. But the bigger question will be, in, pro, in actually contacting these particular five other uh, companies, have they actually adhered to the tenets of the High Court? Mm -hmm. Have they actually ensured that there is public participation which meets the threshold mm -hmm. that, is an, that, that is actually required mm -hmm. so that we don't go back to that process? But again, the flip side of it, even if they decide to overturn that particular decision, yes. th that is a case arrived for the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you that either way, most likely this case will go to the Supreme Court so that it will be now the onus of the party that will not have its day to day to decide is going to the Supreme Court the best thing for the country, mm -hmm. especially looking at the days. But the issue of publication, uh, you have seen that this particular printing uh, company has been able to to actually print mm -hmm. uh, ballot papers for governors, women reps and all that in bulk within a very short period. For the presidency, it's even easier for them. It's the same same uh, template that they have, just running the numbers. And they said five days is enough to actually print. So that, that cannot be a major issue. But say it goes to the Supreme Court, I mean, that you exactly. need like, say, two weeks, you know, maybe on the least side, really to have a proper ruling after that. So really, you know, still it's going to yes. be really tight. Tight, very tight. And t tension will actually start mounting, mm -hmm. which is not actually good for the electoral system and the electoral process. All right. Professor, I mean, you've seen, you know, we've been following what's been happening on the political uh, front, and it seems that this is the, one of the elections that everybody seems to be having cold feet and everybody is seeming, seemingly suspecting each other. Let's say that the Court of Appeal today decides that you know, they're throwing away Al Ghurair and IBC has to get somebody else to do this printing. How sure are we that the company, you know, out of the five that you know, they've been interacting with or, uh, already, are actually going to be given a clean bill of health by all the parties because IBC seems to be in a place where they have to uh, they have to please so many people before they actually do the work that is cut out for them. 
Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, my thinking is uh, the, the ruling should uh, put into consideration the interests of the society. Why? We know uh, the elections as per the law are supposed to take place on 8th of this month. Mm -hmm. So as uh, the lawyer said here, the judges, uh, they don't live in isolation of the rest of the society. So I, I, I expect them to make a ruling in that context that what are the implications mm -hmm. if the elections are not held on 8th. Mm -hmm. There will be a lot of uh, disruptions, mm -hmm. uh, things like investment, yes. education, calendar, mm -hmm. uh, which is not good for this country. So that is, my, that is what I would like to, uh, to happen. But on the other side, uh, if the case is thrown out, then we go to Supreme Court. My thinking is that uh, IBC has the capacity to reorganize themselves and make sure we are ready mm -hmm. by 8th. Sure. So, because I, I, I cannot uh, 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 see, a case, uh, I would not like to see us uh, the, uh, the election being uh, postponed. Mm. That is not what would like to happen in this country. All right, all right, fine. We'll continue the conversation, but we'll, we now have some uh, pictures steady from uh, the burial ceremony of the late uh, Nicholas uh, B. Watt. So that's what's happening in Elgeo Maraquet in uh, Tot village. Remember that his body arrived yesterday and uh, it followed uh, there was a requiem mass in, uh, in, in his uh, birthplace uh, yesterday. Of course family members and relatives were able to come and converge and eulogize uh, the late uh, cabinet minister. Also, just remember earlier on this week, another weekly mass was held here in Nairobi, and it was held at the AIC Milimani, and it was attended by the former uh, Tanzanian president, uh, Jakaya Kikwete, together with other dignitaries, including uh, Raila Odinga. So today, the pictures that you're seeing there from that burial ceremony taking place at, uh, in Tot Village, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy, William Ruto, are expected to be at, in attendance, and therefore, we'll be getting the latest details uh, from my colleague, Elvis Koske in regards to what really is happening there in Tot village. All right, so let's continue the conversation. And Charles, all this back and forth, and you know, we've had so many litigations, and um, one of the questions that very many people have is that, have we opened the space too much for litigation, such that if today, you know, I feel like as a voter, uh, something is not going the way I feel it should be going, I can actually go to court, and the court actually is going to hear me. Have we opened that space too much, and are we having, um, you know, some, some, some cases which really do not hold uh, water? And I'll give you an example. There's uh, one that was um, in the court uh, a few days ago in which um, they wanted that IBC release or announce uh, the final results seven hours after, after the elections. Sure. You have, you're privy to that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that you, uh, what, what is happening this time around is that this election has been characterized by too much litigation to the extent that it is revealing a culture mm -hmm. in Kenyans where we have become too litigious to the, to the extent that um, we do not have in mind other uh, alternatives for dispute resolution mm -hmm. because uh, some issues like what you've mentioned are, are, are really frivolous cases. There are cases that should have, uh, could, could be addressed through consultation or just seeking clarification mm -hmm. in the IBC, even the case that was thrown out yesterday. Yes. Because uh, when you go and say that, uh, for example, that the IBC did not follow the rules, did not engage the cabs in ensuring the standards of the kits mm -hmm. are up to standard that do not allow rigging, this is something that you could have simply written or demanded for an hearing with the IBC, mm -hmm. and then they give a technical report on the status of the kims. Mm. But there has been a continuing uh, spate of litigation to the extent that um, uh, for the lack of an organizing question around this election, this election has come to be largely defined by the process of the IBC. Mm -hmm. There is too much focus on the referee to the extent that even the campaign messages or the campaign yeah. is being forgotten. The campaign has been forgotten, and that, that's where my next question is coming. Uh, because this, you know, we, we, we made sure that, you know, the previous uh, commission was out, and then, you know, we have this new commission, but still there's no satisfaction from almost all parties, Duncan. Betty, I've always said that the buck stops with IEBC, mm -hmm. and the IEBC has actually led us to where we are, and I'm afraid to say that it's actually leading, leading this country to doom. And the basic reason is what my colleague Charles has actually indicated, mm -hmm. in that 
all IBC needed to do is to open its doors, is to show that we are impartial, is to show that we do not favor any side. What do you, what, what, why are you saying that? What did they do to, to, to come across as they were favoring any side? There are so many instances, Betty, if I start, I, I think Nicholas Biwot will be buried before I finish. <laughs> but I can tell you for just one glaring one is that you will actually notice that when NASA said they will have their tallying center, mm -hmm. there was hue and cry from IBC. Mm -hmm. They actually knocked tables and said no. It can never happen. Mm. Jubilee supported and criticized NASA like no one's business. Then, uh, a few weeks down the line, after NASA held its ground and actually showed that they, they are prepared to do that, then Jubilee, through the president himself and the deputy, announced that yes, we will also have our tiling center. What did IBC say? Have you ever had? Nothing. They kept mum. That actually shows you the impartiality. If it is wrong, it doesn't matter whether it, it is Okat, whether it is Charles, whether it is my good professor. It is wrong. An impartial arbiter will actually say no. And that is actually the standards we want from court. Mm -hmm. And that is the basic reason why I'm saying all focus should be on IBC. And if it doesn't do its, it, it actually does not uh, fulfill its mandate. It is not wrong for a Kenyan to go to court mm -hmm. because they've closed their doors to negotiations. They've actually shown that they don't want to hear. And most of these issues they've been told. These cases will not be in court. Issues of Al Gural. Once it was brought out to the fore, they should have invited these people. There's the political parties liaison committee, which is actually constituted by IBC. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about these things openly. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that. Then people have no other option but going to court. Then you cannot blame those people. Let them go to court. Let the court say no. Because that's the only other avenue available. And once the court says no, we will follow. Right. If the court says yes, we follow. We don't actually criticize the judge. We can criticize the judgment appeal. But at the end of the day, the right to actually go and ventilate should never be curtailed. All right. Uh, Professor, let's talk about, I mean, you even, are, you, you're an expert, you know, in this uh, politics and political communication. Um, what do you make of the conduct of IEBC? Is it questionable, like Duncan is uh, saying? Uh, first of all, uh, I think uh, as a society we have a problem mm -hmm. in Kenya where we tend to interfere with the freedoms and the autonomy of institutions. Mm -hmm. We have to believe in our institutions. You cannot be everywhere. You cannot be an expert mm -hmm. in everything. And that is where we go wrong. Uh, the other thing is uh, when the new team came in, uh, they knew why the other team left. So I don't see them coming to commit similar mistakes mm -hmm. or do uh, things which uh, they were, uh, the, pre uh, the predecessor mm -hmm. institution or the commissioners were being accused of, mm -hmm. unless they are very naive. But so, that is what they are doing currently, I think. Is that what they are doing really? Don't you feel like they are trying to you know, make amends with what happened back in 2013, Duncan? They have actually not made amends. This is the typical Fuatanyayo policy. And it's very unfair. Mm -hmm. Because when they came in, they knew the, the issues that bedeviled the previous commission. And the issues that... My, my professor is saying we should trust these institutions. Then why did we interfere with the ESCC when Matemo was there? Mm -hmm. There was something that was not working. Institutions are there, but in the constitution, with the every independence, there's a rider to it. Whereby you can interfere when there's incompetence, and that is constitutionalized. And even this particular inst uh, institution itself, if they are actually going to lead us to, to, to actually bloodshed, it is high time we actually deal with it. Mm -hmm. People have been saying, let people not complain after elections that elections were stolen. Be proactive. Mm -hmm. Then don't criticize them today. I disagree with my good professor saying that we must have elections on the 8th, come what may. If not, Kenya will start having issues economically mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. The converse is true. If we have elections and those elections are not credible, they are not seen as free and fair, right. they, they, are, they are not transparent, it means that actually we will be at war for quite a long time. Okay. Will it solve any issue? Will it just be at the same, the same, same position? that is trying to deal with. All right. We're coming back uh, to the conversation. But for now, though, I just want to cross over live to the Court of Appeal and just listen into uh, some of the final submissions and remarks that are currently happening and being given there by the five judgments. Let's just cross over there and listen in. For the upcoming general elections, we have late August 2017 to add Uraya printing and publishing LLC on 29th May 2017. A contract to that effect was executed by the circuits of 
8th of June 2017. The appellant informed the public of the same via a media briefing which was held on 15th of June 2017. The National Super Alliance, NASA, the first respondent, took issue with this tender award, citing Articles 227 and 10 of the Constitution. NASA complained that the appellant never consulted with the relevant stakeholders and or allowed public participation before making such a decision, thereby floating constitutional precepts of transparency and accountability. NASA all right, so we'll be going back there to continue listening into uh, uh, the Court of Appeal. Uh, it's currently ongoing and it's in session. But let's continue with our conversation. And uh, Charles, I'd like to bring in the issue. It's, it's, it has another conversation about IEBCs that sometimes is seemingly, uh, you know, drop themselves in hot soup because, you know, all these litigations remember the one to do with um, the uh, announcement of the results, you know, at constituency level. They went to court, but the constitution was saying, was very clear about, you know, what really should happen. And that's just one of the cases really that we've seen IBC really get in and then they lose. Um, do you think that they've also played a part in, you know, creating this perception of maybe one, that, that they're not prepared, and uh, another is that uh, maybe not too many Kenyans really trust that you know they will be able to deliver a credible election with everything that that is happening around them. Uh, I think uh, the, the the current IBC and especially the commissioners are victims of the campaign mm -hmm. that is ongoing, because right now we have a campaign, especially by the opposition. There is a feeling that minus rigging or minus a by another system that is compromised, then you are winning this election. And therefore, this has resulted in this disproportionate uh, focus on the IBC mm -hmm. as, the, as, as, the organization, as the organization that's supposed to deal with the elections. Mm -hmm. So that is one. But secondly, I think the challenge with the IBC is the way they've been managing their communication. This is something we've been saying for a very long yeah. time. I think they have not been proactive. The IBC has been caught most of the time trying to respond rather than owning the narrative of the campaigns in terms of keeping Kenyans to, uh, on, on track on what is happening, the status of preparedness, and even being firm on some issues. Mm -hmm. For example, on the issue that uh, my, my, my friend Awakili has mentioned here about the issue of the tiling centers, mm -hmm. well, it is, it, there is no problem in having a tiling center. But if IBC says, uh, our, we, we have no problem with you having a tiling center, mm -hmm. but you cannot declare these results. Because now this creates confusion. Mm -hmm. But when you go out there and say you cannot have a tiling center, then you put yourself at crosshairs with the, with the, with the other political parties. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, secondly, it's the issue of the communication. And uh, IBC, it's time they realize that they are operating within a political uh, environment mm -hmm. and they need that political acumen to deal with the issues. I can see even from the commissioners, uh, very few Kenyans can even tell the, the faces of other commissioners because they, are, they seem to have faded off. We only see uh, the chairman Chebukati. Mm. The, the vice chairperson is not even is barely. But will this really help even if we know all the commissioners? That, is, that means see them all they the are time. not proactive enough in terms of engaging the public on the issues because as commissioners, you are supposed to handle the politics of the election preparations. Mm. You should be in charge so that when there is an issue that Kenyans could have had probably a concern about, then very quickly Kenyans will know this is the position of the commission. Remember the past commission when they, did, when they were doing their uh, election preparations, mm -hmm. even handling uh, petitions, they, they almost uh, divided themselves. So you could know that when it comes to uh, disputes, resolution, the chairperson was then uh, the former commissioner Lutangule, then yes, there was yes. commissioner uh, Matibo and, and Zibo, they were handling, oh, sorry, in Zibo, they were handling the issues of uh, cases arising, mm. and uh, Isaac Hassan was very firm in his communication. Mm -hmm. But when you see um, uh, commissioner Chebukati, the chairperson, he comes about as a laid-back person. Uh, the IBC is not a corporate institution, mm -hmm. whereas it needs to be independent. It needs to have, uh, to project a lot of political acumen so that Kenyans have confidence in it. But I think overall they are being unfairly castigated yes. because they have not had any election is to, it, to manage okay. overall. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is it the same thing? I mean, is IBC a victim of, uh, first of all, a very a fecal political environment and another also a, an, an election that has so many interests and it's you know, sort of like a high stakes uh, you know, process this time round? That is uh, farthest from the truth. Mm -hmm. IBC is just a victim of its own uh, inefficiency and inability to actually uh, do its work. 
And it's very uh, funny that my colleague will actually list what IBC has not done and then fi finally uh, come to the conclusion that they are being unfairly mm -hmm. attacked mm -hmm. just because it's a political season. The fact that it is a political season, the more reason why you actually need to ensure that you are playing by the book. If you are actually, it's in football and you are actually looking at the finals of any mm -hmm. league, the referee is actually key. And all teams look at who will be the referee. Because it can be the referee who decides. And that is why the constitution and the framers of our constitution were wise in actually saying that the chairman will not be the one who can interfere with their results as declared by the returning officers and declare those results. They have to, be de to, to declare what has already been declared down there. Mm. That actually tells you in terms of that particular role. But look at what IBC has been doing. Today, uh, you find that there was violence left, right, center during the nominations. IBC kept mum for quite a long time. That is their mandate. You find that also there is... Is it the their mandate or is it the, the, the party's mandate? It is IB, it, it, party's mandate is just the moral mandate. But constitutionally and legally, it is IBC. They can actually buy you. And that is their, their mandate and they can do so. Secondly, you find that the government itself is advertising. There is the, the government delivery portal advertisement yeah. every day. Yet it is, the law is crystal clear that you cannot advertise government projects or achievements three months into the an election, uh, into an election, and that is clear. Have you ever had any voice of any of these commissioners? No. It, you actually find ministers and uh, cabinet secretaries launching projects, and the law is very clear that you cannot launch a project three months into an election. Have you had that voice? You haven't. And it's not only in terms of the government. Today you'll have this government, tomorrow you'll have another. My take is it does not matter which government. Even if there's something that the opposition is doing, whether it's using public resources, because they also have public vehicles, public mm. what, they should actually come and say this is wrong. Because you, it is an unfair advantage to my colleague Charles if he's also vying and he does not have a government. Maybe they just have a lot of things to, that they're dealing with right, right that is, now. That, that's what I'm saying. And it is really inefficiency the, and they, they, they actually should resign. If they have so much, it's actually admitting that we cannot manage. Actually, Betty, that will not be their word. Actually, because that will be followed by an immediate resignation that I can't perform. All right. How can you rate, Professor, how can you rate the performance of IBC in regards to preparing uh, for the elections? Uh, just a few days ago, at least we saw some progress with, you know, ballot papers for the gubernatorial, senatorial, and uh, woman representative, you know, coming into the country. That's something positive. Do you think that all this negativity really clouds on, you know, some successes and some wins that IBC has made? Uh, okay, first of all, I'm going to sympathize mm -hmm. with the commissioners. <laughs> they came to, yeah, they yeah. came to office very late. They're mm -hmm. facing a lot of uh, pressure. pressure. Mm -hmm. But uh, on, the, on the other side, uh, the negativity which you are seeing uh, towards them, I, I don't think to me, as a profession, I believe, and as a researcher, I believe in evidence. Mm -hmm. There is no concrete evidence which has been tabled against uh, IBC. It, to me, it is all a suspicion. And anything without a proof, mm. anything without uh, concrete data remains as, uh, assumptions, which uh, cannot go, uh, mm -hmm. go, go, go uh, anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, to me, the, the, they are just uh, uh, doing their job, and I believe uh, they are doing well. But we have also to understand we cannot be like 100 percent perfect you know how we are doing uh, mm -hmm. we do uh, we do things even even we do the job evaluations mm -hmm. you cannot be like you are 100 mm -hmm. percent and uh, we, what we have to appreciate is that uh, we have moved uh, made major strides mm -hmm. in development in as far as the organization of elections in this country are, are concerned mm -hmm. i think th th in this year we are better off than 2013 From and th th that is something we should uh, mm -hmm. appreciate and also this idea of trying every time to link an institution with the government, with the ruling party, I don't think it's a good idea because it means then we will never uh, believe and trust anyone mm -hmm. to run our institution. Is that it that we do it, or the public does it, or they do it for them? They do it, you know, on their own accord. Uh, the IBC, I, I, yeah. IBC. Do they find themselves in the situation? Do they bring the situations to themselves? You know, in, in a, you know, to the point that you know they're linked or perceived to be, you know, friendlier to the ruling coalition. I don't think uh, that, that's right because 
uh, and I'm not a st uh, uh, studying brief for yes. IMBC, yes. but I'm talking from a very uh, professional, neutral mm -hmm. uh, perspective. I think to me they have been able to make the corrections where they have been found wrong, okay. including right. the public participation which they mm -hmm. undertook the other day. Okay. Betty, uh, what I just want to ask Professor, mm -hmm. it's, uh, Raila Odinga has actually stated that uh, Professor uh, Matiangi has been summoning Ezra Chiloba and uh, the chairman to his office, and they've been meeting. Matiangi is a chief campaigner for Jubilee in one area. Is that something that you'd expect for, and you say that we are actually improving? But what we perception? Have, you know, we can't also and, and, prove that. And so Betty, I'm saying that, knowing that uh, it is coming from one side, but the professor, good professor, has had a chance to rebut and say no. And remember, visiting government offices, it is not being done at night. It is, there is actually evidence that someone has gone, and if you can come out and say that person is lying, true. But if Ezra Chiloba does not need to wait for Matiangi to deny, he needs to come out and say, the burden is on me, the role that I'm playing is actually supposed to be manifestly seen that I'm not, uh, at that I am neutral. So that it, the next morning he should have held a press conference and said, no, let Raila demonstrate when I went, what time I went, and that time I will say where I was. But isn't but that playing to the gallery, you know, if someone coughs here and IBC has to react, and uh, someone does this here, they have to react. If they, they like don't they react, have serious issues to deal if, with than just reacting about if they don't react, allegations Betty, made against them. If they don't react, sorry for cutting you short, mm -hmm. the country will react. And let me tell you, there's nothing as bad as that. So that they can react any minute, any second, this is their time to react. Because right. we are at that particular political tense moment. All right. Yeah, Betty, so we, uh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one thing that uh, we need also to, guard, uh, to be careful as a country. Uh, the IBC is the agency that's supposed to manage the elections, yeah. but there is also the aspect of interagency cooperation, because yeah. the IBC does set up a security function. Yeah. So who provides security? Mm -hmm. Who does consultation for the purpose of security? Mm -hmm. So I think, again, which is why we need to come back to the issue of there is too much suspicion yeah. around the IBC to the extent that when they are doing their work, they, you, you, they, there is a feeling that you want to know what they work up when you wake up in the morning, where you take your tea, what you do, and everything, mm -hmm. which is wrong. We need the IBC to be independent and as Kenyans there is need for building credibility on the institution by just trying to tell Kenyans where, where there is a reason, justifiable reason for concern, mm -hmm. then this is our issue and, and we raise it. Uh, but if it mm -hmm. is something like uh, Matiangi, the, the CS for uh, internal security meeting the CEO of the IBC, then it, is, it, it makes common sense even to the child there that it is making security arrangements to ensure that the election goes on as planned. All right. Yeah. But the, quest, the other question is, is it that, you know, what are Kenyans saying about the IBC? Is it, you know, how Kenyans are comfortable with the IBC? Maybe they're seeing, you know, the, you know, the kind of work that IBC is putting, you know, in place for the elections. And then you also have dissatisfied leaders who want, you know, things to, you know, sway their own way. So going back to the electorate, is it a problem that Kenyans have with the IBC or is it just the political crop that has with IBC? Uh, actually, the fight that the IBC has is with the political players. Kenyans, it's not the, Kenyans. The problem with Kenyans, however, is that they look at things based on either the political party affiliation. Mm -hmm. So the lens with which you look at this then defines how you perceive the IBC. But um, the problem that the IBC is facing right now, mm -hmm. I want to attribute it to the to the main uh, antagonist, the, the, the main candidates who are running for the presidency, mm -hmm. which is why, for example, uh, it, it, it does not make sense to say we have no problem with the al printing all other ballot papers. Mm -hmm. We only have a problem with it mm -hmm. uh, printing presidential, presidential ballot papers, which means the problem here is that these two candidates who are running for president, the top candidates, are the ones who are creating all these unnecessary uh, attention and interferences on the IBC to the extent that uh, we, it seems like you're only doing a presidential election, yet we have elections everywhere. So the problem uh, facing the IBC emanates from the political aspirations mm. of the top contenders, but now it cascades down to the people mm -hmm. because now Kenyans, as we know, as we know, either the lenses through which we look at issues, especially right now, as we go to the elections, it's either through the ethnic uh, lens mm -hmm. or uh, the political party affiliation where you belong. Mm -hmm. So if today, for example, a uh, government comes and says that uh, the, the ruling uh, Jubilee party says the other day they, they had a problem with the, the judiciary, go and ask someone who is uh, 
in a stronghold of the village, they'll say the judiciary is wrong. Mm. Go to an opposition stronghold and ask them, what is a, uh, do you have a confidence in the IBC? They'll say, no, I don't mm. have confidence in the So IBC. it goes back to the leaders. Yeah. Duncan, what do you think? Do Kenyans really care that, you know, this company is the one that's going to print presidential ballot papers? Do they even, you know, follow through with this? So the, the, the Mamamboga somewhere in, you know, Vihiga County, do they really care? Or are they, do they, are they just waiting for 8th of August, they go cast their ballot and they trust that their vote is going to be secure? One thing I will tell you, Betty, is that Kenyans are an educated society. They, they've actually been educated to a point that the masses, the majority of the masses, understand their political rights. Mm -hmm. And they know that there should be equality of the vote and the power of the vote. And that's why Kenyans, every time and again, turn out in very large numbers. Whether you are that mamamboga, whether you are a manager in a company, mm -hmm. all of them will queue, ensure they vote. That is something that we should maintain so that if there's a perception and that is a very bad perception that is actually out of the Correct. We do not need to clap for IBC when there is already an issue. And then after two, uh, 8th of August, mm -hmm. we'll come with my panelists and start discussing why are people fighting. And we saw it. It's time to know that if Uhuru Kenyatta says IBC, like he said, IBC and the courts do not want us to have elections on the 8th. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter on the other end. They will actually say IBC and the courts at that particular point are favoring this other side. Right. If Raila Odinga says uh, Matiangi meeting only two people uh, as opposed to the entire commission and maybe even including other people, the media there, to see what they are discussing, would actually bring suspicion. That suspicion alone, Mamamboga in Raila stronghold will actually say that election will not be free and fair. Right. And the back stops with that. All right, Professor, you know, this is, a, this is a great platform. And, you know, there are very many Kenyans who are watching. And even as much as, you know, my, my, your fellow panelists, you know, um, and even people out there would throw stones at IBC because of one thing or the other. At the same time, you know, looking forward, what is... What can IBC do right now within the 18 days to really correct past mistakes and, you know, spur some great confidence in Kenyans that, you know, August 8th, they will deliver a fair election? Uh, well, we, we have already seen the arrival of uh, mm -hmm. the ballots for other positions. Mm -hmm. So that is one uh, indicator that they, they are well prepared, mm -hmm. except that the... Uh, what my friend is saying is mm -hmm. that uh, Kenyans are trying to see things from uh, uh, w w which affiliations are you affiliated with, uh, even from an ethnic perspective. Uh, to me, what, what I, uh, I, I, I think is uh, if we conduct an poll today, mm -hmm. most Kenyans will say they want to vote on 8th of this month. All right. They don't want an extension they don't want uh, 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 some, because we don't we, we don't need to be in the campaign mode and political mode forever we have other things uh, to do apart mm. from the elections all right interesting we'll be coming back to the conversation and uh, when we come back from the break we'll also be talking about still ibc the, today they're expected to be uh, sort of like uh, releasing some results in regards to uh, disciplinary hearings that they've been conducting we'll see if maybe one or two people could be bad or you know maybe find a few uh, millions here and there for you know um, wrongs committed. We'll be having that conversation here in studio in the next hour. But for now, though, we want to take a break. Uh, but we're following for you a couple of stories. One, of course, is what's happening at the Court of Appeal. Uh, the session is already underway and we'll also be speaking to our Patrick Amimo to give us the latest, really, on the kind of conversations that are going on there at the Court of Appeal. That's here in Nairobi. Something else that's also happening is we're expecting that uh, press briefing by Nasser flag bearer Raila Odinga it's going to be taking place at a Capitol Hill, still here in Nairobi. That's also be going to be coming up in the next few minutes. We'll be getting to hear really just what uh, this presser is all about. And finally, also another top story that we have for you is the burial of uh, the late uh, former cabinet uh, minister, Nicholas Biwad, that's currently ongoing at uh, Tot Village in El Geo Marrakech. We have our team on the ground there and we'll be getting some information and details of that in the next hour. So for now, so we'll take that break. We're coming back in a few minutes. Don't go away. This is KT.
KTN News.